I did not say that I opposed abortion. What I oppose is the so-called woman's right to choose. It should be the state's right to choose. Ugly, stupid, poor people should not be allowed to have children. That is the most disgusting thing I've ever heard. You don't have any Kylie Minogue records, then? <laughs> this is just typical of callous Tory attitudes. First, poll tax. The most unjust tax this country has ever had to suffer since the Peasants' Revolt of 1381. Well, how would she know? Her family only arrived on the banana boat in 1951. I don't have to take this racist abuse from this home county's Himmler. Wait, 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 wait a minute. Are you denying that your family arrived in 1951 on a boat whose main cargo was yellow crescent-shaped fruit? If that isn't a banana boat, then I wasn't voted the sexiest member of Parliament in 1988. <laughs> And furthermore, Mr Chairman, I hope that that answers Mrs Chaplin's question. Well, not really. Mrs Chaplin's question was, if members of the panel had to be reincarnated as a fish, which would they choose to be? <laughs> He'd be a shark. I am a shark. In fact, furthermore, Mr Chairman, Now, now look, weird little red stickle back with your hands. Quiet! And on that humorous note, it's good night from Alan Bastard, Member of Parliament. <laughs> Georgina Pitt, leader of Hackney Council. <laughs> Sir Lucas Wheatley, the editor of the Financial Preview. <laughs> and Arthur Griffin, racing driver. And that's all the controversy we have time for tonight, so good night. <laughs>
Oh, dear. <laughs> oh, no, 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 please, not the drill, no. <laughs> Report on oil-bearing shale. You managed to find it? Lucky you. <laughs> Bottom, please, Pierce. <laughs> I love you. There's over a billion pounds worth of crude oil underneath Hackney Marshes. It's all going to be mine. Yes, but surely Hackney Marshes is public land. In fact, as a lawyer, I wouldn't be at all surprised if it didn't belong to the London Borough of Hackney. And I wouldn't be surprised if there was room inside your head for a three-piece suite, Piers. <laughs> of course it belongs to Hackney, but fortunately, the leader of the council has the serious hots for me. <laughs> I don't suppose you've ever had a really rude black woman, have you? No, but I, I once had a char lady from Gambia who insisted on calling me <laughs> Mr Wobblybottom. <laughs> <laughs> Georgina, hello! Whop in, big bitch! It's Alan Rostaman Bastardia! Check out the love power, girl! <laughs> well, what time does she get back from lunch then? <laughs> You've got five minutes. Well, I, I, I just wanted to apologise for the other night. You know, I, I think I probably got off on the wrong foot. <laughs> and what makes you think there's a right one? <laughs> <laughs> Black flowers? Red roses. Neil Kinnock's favourites. You are the last person in the world I want to make small talk with. All right, Georgina. Let's make big talk. I have a vision, a vision of a brighter tomorrow. I want to lead the people of Hackney out of the wilderness and into the promised land. And this is an entirely charitable vision, is it? Well, not really. In fact, not at all, no. <laughs> I tend to make a substantial tax-free profit. But you'll get hundreds of jobs and thousands of votes. Bullshit! How? Imagine a huge enterprise zone. Say, on Hackney Marshes? <laughs> Award-winning architecture, hundreds of new roads, all named after Nelson Mandela. <laughs> And at the entrance, an enormous neon sign saying, The Georgina Pitt Enterprise Centre. Sure you couldn't fancy me? Given time, anything's possible. Mm -hmm. Be a bitch to get past my comrades, of course. They think profit's a dirty word. Yes, I think they're probably right. Whenever I hear it, I get all horny. <laughs> Christ! My flatmates! Quick! Promise! <laughs> Your mass picket must have ended early. Oh, no one else turned up. Who's this? Oh. Uh, Alan. Burkhoff. Yeah. A left-wing playwright. We met at the royal court. Fantastic. Um, I did a summer school in revolutionary drama last year uh, in Havana. Did you go? Uh, no. Uh, I mean, no. <laughs> you were too bloody revisionist for me. Oh. Colin Welland was there. Yeah, well, that's two good reasons for not going, isn't it? <laughs> So, what was this, uh, picket about? Oh, health service cuts. The Tory scum are trying to close down the Keir Hardy geriatric unit. Ha-ha, <laughs> bloody great. <laughs> what do you mean, great? Oh, uh, I mean, uh, bloody great, because I want them to close all the hospitals and all the schools and stop all the bloody social bloody security. Uh, Alan's really into deconstructionism. There won't be a full-scale communist revolution with middle-class blood flowing in the gutters until the palliative reforms of the Attlee era are swept aside and the masses have to face the stark reality of their historic class conflict vis-a-vis -vis the ruling bloody elite. <laughs> that is absolutely brilliant. If I wasn't already pregnant, I'd want you to be the father of my child. Well, thank you very much, Alina. It's nothing personal, Larry. It's just you haven't got his analysis. Well, I think blood in the guts is a bit extreme. General strike, yes. Oh, here we go. Typical bloody bourgeois socialist. You always cop out when the crunch comes, don't you? Suppose you went to college, did you? Suppose your daddy's a gynaecologist with a nice big house in Hampstead Garden suburb. That's not my fault. Larry, if your dad is a gynaecologist, why am I having our baby on the National Health? Anyone like some coffee? It's Nicaraguan. <laughs> Good Lord! There's a, there's a Rolls Royce out there with three dead kids lying round it. Bloody great! What? 
Obviously, the owner is a fat cat capitalist who's electrified the door handles of his car. <laughs> and the resulting deaths of the would-be car liberators will only serve to fuel the pre-revolutionary tension, thus hastening the day of bloody reckoning. Yeah, you're right, because someone's just thrown a paving stone through the front windscreen. What? <laughs> Shit! That's my bloody car! <laughs> Your car? Police! Now! Tory MP in distress. <laughs> 57A Warmer Road. Yes, an armor car would do nicely. All right, sister, what are you doing with this Tory vermin? I'm... You've sold out, haven't you? Of course we not. We were simply doing a little business deal. Oh. Nice one, Anna. You just wait till the next meeting of the executive, Georgina. <laughs> You'll be blacked. Sorry, but you know what I mean. Yeah, you're going to be thrown out of the party. And then Larry will become leader. Hey, and then we can afford to join Dupa. And the leader's shut <laughs> So you'll be the leader with you, Larry, old boy? Well... <laughs> Perhaps we could do a little business deal, then. All I want is a long lease on Hackney Marshes. Forget it. There's no way a socialist Hackney Council will ever do business with a Thatcherite slug like you. So I just have to wait until the Tories take over Hackney, then, will I? The Tories win Hackney. <laughs> you'll have a long wait, mate. Yeah, we're the poorest borough in Britain. We've got 57% unemployment. Yeah, the only way your lot will ever win acne is if you take the vote away from the working class. Yeah. <laughs> Larry! What a very good idea! Order! Thank you, Mr Speaker. The poll tax is clearly an outright attack on the worst off in our society. Single parent families, the disabled, the poor, the unemployed, the low-waged. Lesbians, gays, immigrants, gypsies, all will be affected by this pernicious tax. And it doesn't stop there. Ordinary working families with a pre-tax income of £20,000 or less will also suffer in most urban constituencies. And I warn the government, that they are sowing the seeds of resentment and resistance and will reap the whirlwind of electoral defeat and oblivion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Order! Order! Mr. Bastard. Oh, Mr. Speaker, I am grateful for Mr. Crippin's warning of electoral disaster should we decide to impose the poll tax. Clearly, he is a closet Tory, since he wishes us to withhold the tax and thereby stay in power. <laughs> serious note, he is right to say that the poll tax will reduce the living standards of millions of ordinary people. Oh. Although I prefer to use the word mediocre. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> and that is why I am introducing an amendment to the bill. An amendment which has the support of the vast majority of my backbench colleagues. <laughs> there are just two clauses. The first that people whose annual income falls beneath a certain figure, and I'm happy to accept Mr. Crippin's suggestion of £20,000 a year, should be excused from paying the poll tax. Absolutely brilliant! Not yet. <laughs> and second, uh, that anyone who does not pay the poll tax should forfeit his or her right to vote. Mr. Oh. Speaker! <laughs> rallying cry of the American War of Independence was no taxation without representation. I offer a new clarion call. No representation without taxation. The impact of Mr Bastard's extraordinary amendment is still being felt in Westminster tonight. Suddenly, the electorate has been cut by 90% and the voting system returned to where it was before the Great Reform Act of 1832. <laughs> well, that means answer the front door. <laughs> Government whips are appalled and mystified at how Mr Bastard managed to persuade so many of his colleagues to vote for his amendment. However, <laughs> Miss Todd, you destructive and artistic little tick. God. That means go away. Good grief. How dare you overturn government policy? Oh, don't be such a sore loser, Mr. Whippy. <laughs> 
Maddie will just have to adopt my amendment. She can't. Why not? I would have thought she'd be delighted I've disenfranchised the ordinaries. About time, too. Don't you understand? We're in the middle of a constitutional crisis. <laughs> What fun! What do you think will happen if the Queen refuses to give your amendment the royal assent on the grounds that it's unconstitutional and undemocratic? Well, you're the chief whip, Sir Oswald, do you we, tell me? We can't allow the monarch to challenge Parliament's right to make laws. The PM will be forced to declare a republic and replace the Queen. Well, Maggie must be thrilled. It's the one job she's always wanted. <laughs> You've got to withdraw your amendments or you'll split the country in two. I'm talking about blood in the streets, Mustard! I'm talking about Englishmen fighting Englishmen! Well, so what? It happens in every Leeds United game. <laughs> but people will be forced to choose between the royal family and the Conservative Party. Can't you think what a trauma that will be for the millions who don't know the difference? Oh, do <laughs> calm down, Mr Whippy. And stop calling me that! Look, if it comes to roundheads and cavaliers, Parliament controls the army, don't we? What could the royals muster? Troop of Cotswold cavalry led by Princess Anne, a hippie <laughs> rabble under Prince Charles, and Prince Edward, a failed marine, roller skating down Shaftesbury Avenue, followed by the cast of Starlight Express. <laughs> All right, you cold, bloody little shite hawk. Have it your own way. I'm going back to Downing Street to advise the PM to declare a state of emergency. <laughs> Girls! Sobong at the no, 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 no. That means come over here and get saucy. <sighs> Good. Time for another multiple orgasm. <laughs> <laughs> On the other hand, go away, go away. Well, I don't know who you are, but as I'm naked under this kimono, perhaps we could dispense with the formalities. <laughs> you honkies all look the same to me, too. Georgina! God! You look amazing. I do, don't I? But then, I'm an oil millionaires. <laughs> you? You didn't really think I was stupid enough to swallow that Enterprise Zone crap from a right-wing profiteer like you. So as my last act as council leader, before Larry had me purged, I leased the marshes to myself and sold on the oil rights to Texaco. And what you see is what you don't get. But who told you about the oil? Well, that was easy. I simply phoned your office and asked the very nice but exceptionally dim guy who answered why you were so interested in acquiring 250 East End football pitches. So now I'm going back to the West Indies on the banana boat. And it's my boat, my bananas, <laughs> and my island in the sun. <laughs> loady, loady, white boy. <laughs> Here's Fletcher Dervish. You're dead. <laughs> but I can't swim. It's not entirely relevant, Piers, as I just attached you to this enormous bust of Gladstone. Yes, but all I did was tell her the truth. It's a fatal mistake for a politician, Piers. Oh, no, 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 please, please, Alan, please. I'm deaf to your entreaties, Piers. You cost me a hundred million pounds. Yes, but you're a millionaire already. You don't need the money. No, I don't need it, Piers, but you see, I want it. Because I'm very, very greedy, Piers. <laughs> that is why I became a conservative. Bye-bye, <laughs> Piers. No, 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 no. What yes. are you doing? Help! Help! Alan's trying to kill me! <laughs> Don't be such a hysterical old woman, Piers. <laughs> Can't you take a joke? A joke? Honestly, I despair of you sometimes. <laughs> when you've quite done with your schoolboy pranks, Mustard, I would like a private word. Of course. You heard the chief whip, Piers. Off you go. <clears throat> <laughs> Start, let's get down to business. I've come here to give you one more chance to withdraw your amendment. All right. Or else the two large security operatives who are waiting outside the door will come in and... Did you say all right? Yes, all right. I'll withdraw. You will? I want to do what's best for England. If the government feel that the country isn't ready for my brand of radical feudalism... Oh, thank you, Bastard. Thank you. You're a patriot. Of course. And you don't want some sort of bribe because I was authorised to go up to 50,000. No, I don't need your money. 
Although, if you've got any young daughters who need deflowering. <laughs> I am not married. Oh, no. Of course. You're not. I, I was forgetting. <laughs> oh, well. <sighs> All right, Alan, if you'll excuse me, I'll go and give the PM the good news. Yes, yes. Oh, yes. Off you go. <laughs> Is something wrong? <clears throat> no, no. I'm just being silly. <sighs> it's just that. Piloting that amendment through was the most satisfying thing I've ever done. I suppose life's just too easy for me. You know? I mean, I'm incredibly rich. I've got the largest majority in the House of Commons. And if I was any better looking, people would suspect I was an android. <laughs> Sometimes it's just so... It's just so depressing being perfect. <laughs> There must be something you still haven't achieved. No, I... Well, there is something. I don't, I've never told anybody before. I just wish I could do sex longer. You mean you can't? No, of course I can, you know. But it's all over so quickly. I pretend that it doesn't matter, you know. The 30 seconds is all a woman can take with a nuclear-powered sex alien like me. I see. <laughs> Alan, look. It may be possible. I'm not saying it is that you weren't meant, you know, to do it with women. A lot of non Jews are suppressed homosexuals. Yes. Of course. <laughs> that would explain everything. Oh, Alan. And you're an uphill gardener, too? <laughs> yes! Yes! But does Maggie know? No one knows but you. Oh, Mr. Whippy. Oh. <laughs> Alan! Boy, have you made a big mistake. <laughs> What do you mean by that? I hate queers almost as much as I hate poor people. <laughs> oh, you have cheered me up. <laughs> well, what should we say? A thousand a month for starters? And I can ignore any three-line whips that interfere with my busy heterosexual social life? But you just said you don't need money. No, no, I don't need money, but I do love blackmail. <laughs> you unmitigated, unprincipled bastard. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, Minister. <laughs>